Hey everyone, it's Wednesday the 1st of July and it's 1.20 in the afternoon and I've got some new barricade lights to show you. I've got another six to my collection plus an accessory plus another blue light bar. Probably used on a fire vehicle or something like that I would expect as it's a mini light bar. I don't think many police cars use those magnetic ones. They used to use just a magnetic single beacon they may have, I don't know. Anyway, so, shall I spin the camera around and show you what I've got? Now, these are from a friend of mine who also collects these, but he's also got a business. He runs a company called Response Vehicle Lighting, which if you Google that, if I remember, I'll put a link in the description, but if you Google Response Vehicle Lighting, you'll find his website, and he sells all sorts. I think most of it is modern LED lamps now and stuff. LED beacons like this, or light bars, full-sized light bars, all sorts of different sized light bars, work lights, flood lights, spot lights, any form of vehicle lighting basically. Light clusters for trailers, I've even got one of those in a box down there that he sent me that I still haven't actually uh, got to take a look at yet. So um, that's how I actually obtained this. And I'm going to start with these so I can actually move these out of the way. So, because I bought a couple of these, he says, dropping in the fan everywhere, let's the fan out of the way. See, I bought a couple of these ones from someone locally, uh, I don't know, a couple of months ago. So I contacted my friend here. These are Britax like bars by the way and I asked if he had like a spare blue lens so I could have one in blue and one in amber because both of those bolt on. He said he has but he's also got a mini light bar so I thought well I might as well have both when my voice doesn't decide to just disappear at random. So I've got a magnetic one here and these are actually made by Premier Hazard. I'm not sure about that lens though because there isn't a sticker on it but that's Premier Hazard. But what I can see, apart from the gubbins being a bit different inside, the lens shape is exactly the same. So I may stick that one in one of those amber. That might actually be a Britax lens for all I know. I haven't actually looked and I can't. It's dusty. Yeah, that one might actually be a Britax one. I don't know doesn't say. But, uh, full lens, undamaged, well apart from some dust from storage. So I'm definitely going to put that blue one on one of those. So I've got one bolt on in blue and one bolt on in amber. Anyway, I can actually show you this one because it's all connected and located up. Not for very long though because my cable gets hot. I don't understand why. This is actually thicker than the actual cable if not about the same thickness. That goes from the cigarette plug to the light. But this one actually gets hot for some reason. Shit quality cable probably. So I'll give you a quick blast of this. Let's just dim the lights a little bit. If I touch this on here. Whee! I do like that flashing effect. I can see it in the camera. It does go to a bit random. You get that sort of scrolling effect eventually. Ah, shit, yeah, it's getting hot. I don't know why. That's it. Probably a shit cable. This bit's not getting hot. <laughs> it's just the cable I'm using to connect it. Right. So we can now move this one out of the way. So, yeah, I would say if you restoring an old emergency vehicle or something it might be good to hit response vehicle lighting up because he does have some old stuff like this <clears throat> or if you need something for a new vehicle recovery vehicle I don't know van whatever works van anyway let's move on to the lamps now one of these was a bonus that was a free added bonus 
Um, just a dormant traffy light, but I really do like these. That body has obviously been in the sun for so long because it's faded. That's the colour it's supposed to be. But I'm not worried about things like that. It shows it's been used. It has got a battery in it, so if I... Uh, actually, I'll dim the lights in a bit because I've got batteries in all of these. Yeah, that's got a photo cell in this one as well. And it's a steady burn. So that was a freebie. These are the ones that I actually bought from him. Because... Uh, He's a collector. I've been having a bit of a clean out in his um, collection. I suppose he's got to the point where he's got so many. So, we've got this thing. I actually know nothing about this. I can't even remember if he told me what the uh, make and model of this was in our Facebook conversation. <laughs> I've completely forgot. But uh, I do like it. It's completely different to, uh, well, what I've got in my collection because I haven't got one. Well, I have now. Lemon lens, it is LED, it does have photo cell as well, plus it's got a selector switch there so you can select between flashing and static or steady burn. I don't know why we call it static. I suppose because it's like still and not doing anything, you know, as in the light pattern itself compared to flashing. Anyway, three American lights next. I've got these two. These are, these are the Protector Flash, Protection Services, Inc. Division of Stabler Companies, Inc. It's got the US PAT number there. And Harrisburg, PA. So they do look pretty much the same. The only difference I have found, even the lenses look the same, this one's a bit dustier and a bit faded on the body. That uh, this one is a flashing one, and that one is again a steady burn. Again, I can't remember if that was mentioned in our conversation. I'm so sort of forgetful at times. And we've got this one, which is a sundowner by a flip by um, Flexolite. Flexolite signal sundowner. Just just a simple on off. It doesn't have any features or anything. I'm actually glad I've got some uh, American lamps in my collection. I've got quite a few now. Don't even think I would ever get one, <laughs> to be honest, because it's so expensive to have things shipped over from the States. I can go onto the American eBay and find various American barricade lights for sale, but the postage is very often more than what the lamp is going to cost. So it's one of those things where you got to really want it in order to post or to pay the postage. Anyway, I think this is actually my favourite. On account of it is so ridiculously bright. It's made by Nissan. It's got Super Prima, Prima, Prima. I'm not sure how you'd pronounce that. It's got a little accent over the A. So if anyone knows, oh, Nemo is awake. I have to contend with him meowing and loud exhausts. What's up? No, I can see you're awake. You don't have to keep me going. What? You had another seizure the other day. Technically my fault, but it was no, by no means intentional. Um, what triggers his seizures, I know I'm digressing a bit here, um, is sound, believe it or not. And because I've been restoring Matchbox cars, which will probably be in the next video, um, I was rattling a spray can, and that very loud high-pitched clack, the little P thing inside that rattles up and down, triggered his, uh, his um, seizure. I didn't even know he was in the kitchen with me at the time. So... I didn't even think I was close enough to him. You usually have to be quite close to his ears in order to trigger it, but not with that. It's obviously loud enough to trigger it. Anyway, back to this. So it's made by Nissan. Super Primar, or Primar. Um, it's got two features. So it's got two bulbs in here, technically. It's got the Zenon strobe. And it's got a little incandescent, incandescent rather, filament bulb. 
And like I said, this thing is ridiculously bright. It takes up to four batteries in here, but it will work on two. One's not enough. And I found the way this battery compartment is configured, you've got to have one either side there. Two on one side won't work, two on the other side won't work. So it's got to be one from either side. So, I think it's time I did that. I'm going to have to put the lights back on again because I've got one more item to show you. So that one's already come on. I'm going to do that one last just because it is bright. So, you can switch on the LED. It's actually not a bad light I put on that one, is it? For a 360 LED. Can be a bit awkward to do a 360 LED, especially if you're trying to do it on a budget. Because to get good light output on a 360 degree, you need quite a few LEDs to do it. I've actually managed to do it with, I believe, there's four, so there's one in either direction. I should spread the light enough, I think, with that lens design. Anyway, this one should be a flashing one. I've got this around the right way. Then we should have the static burn, the steady, which has stopped working. I'm sure that was working. Was working. No. No, that one doesn't want to work at the minute. Although. Ah, there we go. The battery contacts do need a clean up in both of those, so that's why that's a bit temperamental. And the last standard one, which is also a very slow flash. Like I said, if some appear to be dimmer, it's because these batteries are not 100%. Actually, from this angle, that one looks quite dim, but not so bad. Head on. That one's a bit dim. Yeah, that one's got a cruddy battery in it. Why he does that? He's just been in the kitchen, ate some food, and every time he comes out, he's got to meow like that. <laughs> anyway, should we bring in this beast? This could very easily be used in daylight like this. So we've got two features. We have strobe. See what I mean by that being bright? Camera's not actually picking it up very well. But if I flip the switch the other way. It's got steady burn as well, which is actually quite bright. That is a very tiny little bulb in there. That's giving out that steady burn. It's only about that big. Tiny little thing. But yeah, you could quite easily use this in daylight. I suppose the battery life would be twice as long if you put all four batteries in. And there's another feature on this I forgot to show you. These legs fold in like that. So you can sit it like that. But that's actually not as stable like that, believe it or not. Right. I'm going to turn these off now. Two of them have gone off automatically because I've got that light on. Yeah, that bloody video. That one's got some timers. Sometimes it'll come on, sometimes it won't. Let's stack some of these over here. Yeah, I don't think I showed you the steady burn on this one, did I? Here we go. Just to prove it has got both features. I wouldn't be surprised if that's a Nissan as well, to be honest. And we've got this one. Turn that one off. Now, the last item. It isn't a genuine item. My friend has actually built this himself. So it is a replica, but I like it. I'm not sure it's going <laughs> to um, be in the full frame up there. So I'm just going to bring it this way. So, and bring 
going to get you this way. Like so. And there it is. And tighten this up so you don't drop. And we have a tripod. Something that used to be used quite a lot back in the day. And I've currently got a 1970s doorman lamp on it. It's actually the uh, traffic lamp. Yeah. The Dorman Smith traffic lamp, which was... It's basically a Dietz 650 from the United States of America. That uh, Dorman got the rights to produce over here under the traffic lamp name. But if you stick it next to a uh, Dietz 650, it's exactly the same. But anyway, we've got the tripod. It is a very good replica, actually. I'm uh, pretty pleased with that. And after a tripod for years, and they are very, very, very difficult to find these days. <laughs> I'm going to have a bit of dust. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Quite popular here many years ago in the 70s and 80s to have your lamp, electric lamps like that on a tripod. In fact, someone on my Facebook, because I posted a little video of this onto my personal Facebook as well, and they said when he was when he was doing scaffolding, they used to put these out around the scaffolding. Quite a long time ago. <laughs> But uh, no, they don't get used anymore. But I actually quite like that setup. I wouldn't mind some more tripods, but they're very hard to get hold of. It does fold as well. Or at least that third leg at the back there does fold. So they can lay flat on something as well, you know, in the back of your truck. But, uh, it's literally made with four bits of angle gr uh, angle grinder, angle iron, and just a little flat plate with a hole in it to bolt the lamp on. It's exactly how they were made back then. Because <clears throat> um, I've got to lay this up here. Oh, that works that way as well. <laughs> you can't see that, but. I'm going to get the cable out of the black way. I didn't realise you could do that with it. I've got to loosen this off now. The legs fold back and underneath. It does give you a bit of a weird angle for the lamp though. And look at that, I could have got that in on the bench as well. Never mind. So I do, and I don't want to bend this to straighten it up, but I think I'll just leave it as it is. I'm not sure what he's used as the pivot there. I thought it was a nut and bolt, but it's not. It's like a little pin. It's a good design. Yep, I'm happy. I probably, probably wouldn't know the difference if it weren't for the paint because you can see it's a nice brand new paint job <laughs> but uh, yeah right I'm gonna turn this off so I'm not flatten the battery this is actually one of my favorite lamps as well and I've got four of them now in various conditions but if I can ever find any more in various conditions for a good price because believe it or not these can sell on eBay for quite a sum of money I've seen them go for some ridiculous amounts sometimes. Anyway, I'm going to leave the video here. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I will talk to you in the next one. Bye.